Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Ray P. Welcome back to another episode of the We Got Y'all podcast. Um, I'm not by myself. Y'all know I'm joined by my amazing, understanding, sentient, thoughtful, caring co-host, my road dog, one of my best friends in this world, Kyron, a.k.a. K. Rich. What's going on, Rich? Ray P, how you feeling? What's going on with you? I appreciate you. <laughs> The lovely intro, as always, right back at you with everything you said. How are you feeling? I'm good. I can't see. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> as she takes her glasses off, I can't see. <laughs> I got a lot of shit going on, clearly. I'm I'm okay. I'm just, I'm coming off of a, a, a social siesta, so I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's cool. It, it's cool. Um. This is why, this is why I love doing this with you, um, because I, we both understand how, and we talk about it, how life can just be lifing. Yeah, you just get tired and you just need breaks. We're both very similar in the sense of there are times where we just need to um, disconnect from people. For sure. Um, and I'm glad and happy that I understand you well enough to when it happens, I know exactly what's going on. Yeah. And it ain't even nothing compared to somebody who doesn't understand. And they're like, where, where, where are you? Uh, what, are you okay? Uh, I'm like, nah, yeah. I, I, I get it. I got, <laughs> I, a get couple, it. I got a couple like, are you mad at me? So I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, you know what's funny? And we'll, I don't want to I don't want to belabor things before we get into the episode and things like that. You know what's funny? Um, over time, that's something that I, I, I think people learn to, well, there's some kind of a certain maturity mm-hmm. when you start learning that not, not everything's about you. Yeah. And that like people just have lives and things going on mm-hmm. and like the timeline of adults to respond. I don't know where we got to this world where if you don't respond to somebody within 20 minutes, within an hour, within half a day, that there's yeah. some kind of issue. We got full ass adults with busy schedules. Like I'm gonna get to you when I get to you, and it ain't no beef or nothing like that. I just maybe don't have the mental capacity, or um, I forget. There's some meme that was going around talking about free time. Mm-hmm. Like my, if, if my free time means that I'm sitting on the couch doing nothing, that's still my time. Like I don't have to respond to you because I'm not right. doing anything in your eyes. But either way, what well, um, I don't even have time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love on my dog, make sure he's okay. I don't even have time, and I'll tell you what, I start to feel that line more and more each day for sure. Like, I mean, I ain't, so that's and that's why I really like to show love, or, um, or you know, it I kind of let people know that's how I really fuck with you because I really don't have time for too much of anything, yeah. So if I'm pulling up, if I'm supporting, if I'm doing whatever, like trust me, that's because I love you sincerely for sure because uh, a nigga don't have time. Yeah, no, and I appreciate you. Kyron did check in on me because if you do follow my personal page, it was silent. I didn't think about it till yesterday. I didn't even post last week's episode of We Got Y'all. I don't know how I did that because that was before I took my break. <laughs> that's I, that's not even what got me. What got me was when I knew I had a feeling. Uh-huh. Um, I told you earlier, I, I made a reel for the culture garden um, and you were at it. And you didn't respond, which is perfectly fine because I'm like, all right, then I know what this is. I, I didn't get a happy Sunday praise the Lord niggas. And that's when I was like, let me check in on my dog <laughs> just to make sure it ain't nothing deeper than her just taking a break. You know what yeah, I mean? And it was yeah. just a, hey, man, just checking in on you. Yeah. Um, and all that kind of good stuff. But once I didn't get that, I'm like, all right, maybe because you had been talking about wanting to step away from social media. Mm-hmm. For a while, so it made sense that you didn't post. But I was like, let me just double, double check. Yeah, but sure. it doesn't because I how I'm gonna promote. How we gonna promote the show? Right, we gonna work it out. We gonna work it out. But we gonna work it out. So thank y'all. I'm good. And just for people who know me, uh, or maybe as y'all get to know me a little better, those in my real life, I will disconnect in a second. I will go zero dark thirty. Seven. <laughs> no, you got it. Oh, okay. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> and, and just be gone. And it's no nothing. You will, if it's something to you, you will absolutely know. There will be no question, no nothing. But for the most part, I will completely disengage. There's only one person on this earth who I talk to every single day. And that's just is what it is. 
Yeah. But I love y'all. That's, that's, being a, that's being an adult, man. I love it. I'm glad that you're taking care of yourself. I told you that. Like, I don't care about none of that. Whatever. I'm going for a few days. I don't care. As long as you're taking care of yourself, yeah. that's all that matters with me. Um, to be the best version of yourself and to recharge and get that, get the juices back flowing. Um, so yeah, glad you're good. Glad everything is cool. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, technical difficulties. Um, Ray P's yeah. ring light went out. <laughs> so obviously she's still shining. She's still glowing. Still as beautiful as ever. Yeah. Um, so you know she she don't need it. But in case you were wondering if the lighting and stuff like that, um, but I'm sure nobody would notice. It is what it is. But um, we are here. Uh, um, Rachel, dare I say, begrudgingly, to talk about the shy. Yeah, season six. Um, yeah. We're at season six, episode thirteen, titled "Legacy." This episode was written, or excuse me, the written, directed by Malachi, written by Whitney Beckwith mm -hmm. and Jewel Cornell. Obviously, the show is created by mm -hmm. Lena Waithe. Um, as far as the synopsis goes, Duda's birthday sparks emotions. Shocking news brings new problems for Emmett and Keisha. Damien makes a surprising discovery while Alonzo takes a bold step. Before we get into the episode, there will be spoilers. If you have not seen the new episode, please be sure to uh, check it out before you get into this episode. Yeah. And also, the show is currently streaming on Paramount+. Plus. There will also be explicit content throughout this episode. Um, yeah, Rachel. Nuck if you buck. Nuck so. if you buck. Nuck, 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 nuck if you buck. I think nuck. I said something about, you know what I'm saying? I was going to say, I was going to come in and give you your props because, or that, your props. Well, I, well, before you get into it, that was something I did. I think I did say that was just something I read on the internet. So it's not yeah. an original idea. I don't want to take credit for it. There was some chatter on the internet, and I was like, hmm, I wonder if it's true. We had a discussion about it. Um, I was correct about Trig. Yes. And him being out, house arrest, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of other things that I wish I was correct about that I wasn't. A lot of things that frustrated me this episode. Yeah. Well, we can go I ahead was, and talk about them. I was right about the return of Rosalind, so there's that. You definitely were. <laughs> definitely Did were. Not did not need the return of Dom, but I guess they're gonna give um fuck uh Vit not Brett. the most, huh? Oh, you're talking about uh Vic Mensa. Vic Mensa's uh character of love interest, because I'm assuming that's what that was supposed to be. But but here's the thing, Rachel. That's that's part of the issue with the show right now. They're doing too much with these ancillary characters. Yeah. Okay, let's let's get into it. Um, I tons of places to start. Tons, yeah, I don't even know where to start. Um, and where's Jada? <laughs> Jada was in maybe two episodes, whatever episode we met Damien. That's the last time we saw Jada. Yeah, and she was. And in she it. was only. She was barely in it. And she was barely in it. Darnell seems to be the uh, the primary parent this season or this part of the season, which is totally fine. It is what it is. But um, I want to start. We can start with the Nook being Ronnie's father. As you said, that came about last week due to some Internet research. Um, it makes sense, but it it makes me think or question again, how pregnant was Keisha when she got kidnapped? You know what I'm saying? Like she had to be fresh and I was still unclear on how long she was in that madman's basement chained up. You know what I'm saying? So you were Time pregnant right up. there. The timeline doesn't quite make sense, even though we know she was actively seeing and she was on her way to literally see nook who couldn't even bother to come get her but whatever um i i just don't understand it'll be interesting to see what this does to the dynamic between nook and emmett does he now have empathy it looks like he was excited to be a dad we mm -hmm. know he was apologetic to keisha for 
and seemingly taking the blame because he should have just gotten up to come get her. Like, I'm coming to see you. You know, I don't drive. It's the middle of the night. Like, what the fuck? Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm very curious as to what this does. I know it's going to really, really bother Emmett. Um, clear, we saw that, but I, I don't know what it does for the story. Does Nuck now become this empathetic character? Does he try to get Keisha back to have a family with her since, I mean, it is his baby and mm. not Emmett's? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the only reason she stopped talking to him was because he didn't come get her and she got kidnapped. And, you know, but now he seems a little bit more mature. Now he's trying to make his own money outside of Duda, wink, wink. So I don't, I don't know what that looks like. And we know that there's already a low key interest in other niggas besides Emmett from two episodes ago where we saw what's her face and Reagan Gomez at the club. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. A propensity for other niggas. Um, shout out to Sickle Cell. Uh, not shout out to Sickle Cell, but Sickle Cell Awareness, <laughs> you know. Um, I think the show does a, a they do a job about trying to bring awareness to different scenarios um, plaguing the Black community. So uh, I've got some cousins with Sickle Cell. It is in my family. Uh, so just prayers for strength for everybody on their treatment journey. Absolutely, absolutely. Very well said, Rachel. Um, yeah, when it comes to the whole nut scenario and him being um, Ronnie's father, the lead up to it didn't really do anything for me. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, you have to have Ronnie be sick. You have to have him go to the hospital, get tested. Both parents need to carry the trait. The whole nine. I, and, and other than the awareness, like you mentioned, um, that's the only thing that I really cared about. Now it's more so about what happens. Yeah. What does this mean to everything you just said? What does this mean overall? Mm -hmm. How do Nuck and Emmett co-parent? Yeah. Um, does Nuck have some other tricks up his sleeve? Like you said, let's have this family dynamic. Is that smart for him knowing that, you know, him and Duda pulled up to the hospital mm -hmm. on Emmett? Last but episode. now that's my son. And now that's my son. Do I tell Duda this? We see people who are close to Duda sometimes keep some things close to the vest. Mm -hmm. Duda is unhinged right now. Um, he's got sure. a lot going on. And that might make his work life a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. For sure. And of course, everybody knows. Well, not everybody, but you can imagine when you have a child, you need to get some more bread. Yeah. You need some other avenues of money. He's already started working on that, as you mentioned, whether it's through extortion or not. <laughs> um, he is getting some additional funds, and now I want. I think Nuck, you pointed out his maturity. I think he wants to go hard for his son. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing his son and meeting him, you know, mm -hmm. for the first time, air quotes, meeting him. It was just one of those moments where, all right, then, like, I trust that this guy wants to be around. He's going to yeah. provide. Um, I, I don't have, I don't think him and Emmett are going to have an issue other than if he does try to get back with Keisha. Mm hmm. Um, but I do, I would like to see the point of view of Keisha in all of this. Yeah, for sure. That's what I, I hope the story in the show pivots towards that viewpoint because she has some decisions to make. And mm -hmm. you'll see, you'll hear people all the time that might have situations going on and their kids get involved. Mm -hmm. They're always going to try to make their family work first. For sure. No matter what's going on. And it's not like Emmett has been, like Emmett has <laughs> you feel me? Like Emmett's got <laughs> three kids. Yeah. Where I can maybe, you know, pick up and it's just been me, me, you, and your dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, we try to see what happens from there. Um, because like you said, and it's always a funny little thing with those relationships that this didn't end because we ended, it ended because of some other shit, some yeah. traumatic events. For sure. It's not necessarily because we ran our course. So is that something worth looking at again? I'm not sure if the show or the writers will take it there. Um, I don't think it's any surprise, especially if you listen to last week's episode. Um, we didn't necessarily get down that path, but we did read some Reddit reviews mm -hmm. and Reddit stuff. And um, 
yeah, the writers just seem to be a little bit all over the place. Um, I just mentioned how we have a lot of storylines going on that we don't need. This episode felt like the epitome of that. For sure. Like for this to be, and you know, if you've been listening since episode nine, when we started, we just kind of been waiting and kind of setting up the okay, you're gonna get to the halfway point, and this is happening. Like you're, mm-hmm. you're gonna build up, build up, build up. And here we are with three episodes left. And this is gonna be a lot in the next three episodes. Now, yeah. there was a significant death, maybe not significant because they didn't give us enough time with this person. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll talk about that this episode, but maybe that jump starts the last three and what we need to do and how we need to get up out of this season. Yeah. But um, in regards to Nuck and Ronnie and Keisha and Emmett, I am, I do have my eye closely on that. And I hope that it's more about Keisha and what she wants to do, because I don't want to sit here stressed under Emmett. Mm -hmm. I just seen, like, like I said earlier, I seen nothing do to pull up to the hospital. I'm not about to live this life. And we've already known from her she's not living it. But I'm not going to jail for you, my nigga. Like, I'm not doing none of this. Um, which I respect. I wish more women took that stance with niggas. Oh, um, you know, I'm not going to jail, none of this. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. Hopefully they land that safely. Yeah. Um, but it can go a lot of different ways. I hope so. A lot so. of different ways. I, I hope so. Uh, you mentioned an untimely death. We can jump right there to the premature killing of Alonzo Esquire. <laughs> so we see he and Duda have a little conversation, which even that was stupid to me. Um, and, and this was my issue with the episode last week. Is everybody is talking too much and it just seems weird that you're doing this. Okay, we know he's a successful attorney, defense attorney, um, probably has represented many a guilty person, many a criminal. I said many kills. <laughs> many killers. <laughs> Howsoever, I didn't understand him pulling up on Duda like that. Creating conflict with Duda. Because if you know that you're trying to get him put away, I honestly really wouldn't say shit to you until you started it with me, you know? And that just was not the case. It also speaks to Duda's mindset um, to have him killed right now. Uh, The conversation they were having, it was about, you know, protecting your family and... um, Alonzo goes, you know, all the enemies you got, you need to worry about who's protecting you. I know that that bothered Duda and it's something that has been plaguing him for the last two, maybe three episodes is knowing who to trust. And I don't think real quick, Rachel, because I don't think we discussed this. I just want to throw this in. Got the tie on this Mm -hmm. car saying this will look good on you and your coffin. Yes. Or your casket. We didn't even discuss that, but to your point of all these enemies, and I don't even know which direction they're coming from. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to get notes and packages like this. I'm definitely paranoid. For sure. For sure. Uh, But paranoia aside, this is a maniac. This is a narcissist and some an active killer. You know that. I didn't understand how he did not know Duda being that he was married to Alicia and just given the family ties. I know he was busy. So that to me was a bit of a plot hole, but whatever. I just, I did not like the exchange that they had. And obviously I did not like uh, Zay being the one to kill um, Alonzo. Hated that. So early. Um, we saw that he's very busy. Okay, that's fine, whatever. But you don't look in the back seat, and I was really trying to think like, do I examine my car when I'm coming in, like from the airport late anywhere? Like, yes, high key. Like, you're not that busy, you wasn't even on the phone. Right. So I don't know. It it, it was just tricky, but I guess when you have that level of confidence and assurance that maybe you don't have enemies so you're not anticipating any hurt harm or danger coming to you but that's what happens when you get involved with a homicidal drug dealing maniac yeah i think there's a uh, i think there's this mindset or this sense of false protection yeah when you're on the other side of the law 
when you mm-hmm. are an attorney, whether you uh, wear a badge, um, you know, working for, you know, a police department, federal, whatever the case is, um, judges, there's certain people where you just don't put hits out on them. Like you yeah. don't, you don't fear for your life because of the position you hold. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming after years of doing that, you probably take that stance. Yeah. Uh, I think dude is probably the only one crazy enough to take a shot at someone like uh, Alonzo. Mm-hmm. Especially when you consider that Duda has something to lose in this whole case as well. For sure. I'm assuming that Duda was well aware because we see him meet with Trig mm-hmm. and say, you know, they got my DNA in the car. That don't mean shit. As long as you keep your mouth shut, you're good. Right. Uh, it was never directly mentioned to Duda that Alonzo was pushing Trig to, hey, snitch mm-hmm. on this nigga. Yeah. Otherwise, he's going to jail for the rest of your life. But I think mm-hmm. dude is smart enough. He's been a criminal long enough to know these are the options. For sure. Um, and to your point, Rachel, why are you pulling up on me? Like, I don't even know who you are. Come on. And you coming up to me, threatening me. Which it makes, makes me... Nervous. Yeah, so now I'm doing reading. You was married to Felicia. Felicia, that's my that's my biggest op right now. That part. To my knowledge. And then why are you telling him your business? You mean you're the father of the man who I know tried to shoot me? Yeah, say less. Cool. I'm I'm gonna put this money out in the streets. I'm gonna see what comes back, and we're gonna handle it accordingly. That part. Um, I don't give a fuck if you Esquire or not. Like you can get popped, and I got one of my young boys that'll set up on you, Mm -hmm. and you won't even hear it coming. Um, It was just. I guess all I can say about it is, Rachel, that better pay off. There, there better be something incredible. At the end of this season, the next three mm-hmm. episodes that justify killing off a character like Alonzo, who has so much potential for sure in this story. For sure. Um, to kind of whether it be the downfall of Duda, and it could be, I guess, unintentionally. Mm-hmm. But he, maybe he could have discovered some things. I just don't understand the reasoning and I can't see it. I've been yeah. trying to imagine it and picture what it could be, but I can't see the end goal. I don't know why they did that. I think to your point, and this is the only reason I could think to justify it, quote unquote, is to jumpstart the action, even though we should be at the climax and the rest of this is a uh, falling action um, and resolution. But maybe that is what it is. So now maybe Rob is now for real, for real motivated to get to the range, to learn how to shoot, to really take Duda out. Alicia forgets about Shad and takes matters into her own hands because now you've killed my brother and my ex-husband, the only two men I love besides my son, you know? Maybe, maybe that's it, but I, I don't that's, know. Yeah, and I'm not even seeing that's a, what you said would make more sense if Rob hadn't tried to kill Duda. Mm-hmm. I would have enjoyed that more. Like, all right, son tries to avenge his dad. Okay, cool. But, like, we yeah. know you're not a shooter. We know you ain't about that. The same way when Emmett yeah. pulled up on Alicia, like, the problem isn't uh, if you can't, like, you can't kill me. Like, you you don't yeah. have it in you. Like, you're not built yeah. like that. We know Rob, that. you're not built like that. And I'm not trying to see this redemption story about you finally getting your shot right and taking out Duda. That's not yeah. realistic either. A nigga like Duda's not getting taken out by you. We've seen it. Right. Like, you got to have a certain type of, like, prestige to touch Duda. In that sense, okay. so I don't. At this point, honestly, I don't even know who's going to be the one to take out Duda. But they're building it up. They're turning. It's they're good. turning Duda. Like yeah, they're turning Duda almost into like a cartoon villain. Villain. Like mm-hmm. he, it's, it's getting. It's getting like we know he's a villain. We know he's a bad guy. We know all of that. But it's getting to the point now where it's comical. Like somebody. For sure. I prefer the Otis Perry version of Duda, where we saw glimpses of him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We this is Otis Perry, the mayor, businessman, stoic, this that, and the third. And then we saw glimpses of him being a maniac, you know. Um, I like that a little better opposed to that being the only image of him we see, even though maybe now he feels like y'all know what it is. I can come out the shadows and just be who I am, you know. Um, but we definitely are seeing the chinks in his armor. 
That's a fact. Let me ask you this, and we can transition to this character. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about this, and I'm wondering if they're setting it up to where Bakari takes out Duda. I think that too. If it's not Alicia, it's probably going to be Bakari. Because, because they're making it. it mm -hmm, go ahead. No, nah, I was going. I think probably what you're going to say. Yeah, they're making. They're setting it up to where he has real animosity and real issues with the, mm -hmm. outside of just being a part of the organization. Now it's personal. Now yeah. you picking on me. Now you choking me up and shit, telling mm -hmm. me I'm going to get my allowance when you give it to me. Yeah. Now you smashing my laptop. Then why did you even bring that? Yeah. Rachel. <laughs> Rachel. Like, come Rachel, on. Rachel, time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Let me finish this thought real quick. The only thing I was going to say was it makes sense because Bakari's already in the circle. Yeah. Normally, you know, Caesar and Brutus. Like, mm -hmm. Usually stuff like that happens from somebody who's already Peter and Judas, or excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, Judas and Jesus, should I say. Um, <laughs> like, normally it's already somebody close to you that makes that kill shot. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense for Bakari to be the one. But let's rewind to your point. Rachel, I'm watching this. And if you the first time watching it, if you're not paying attention, it looks like Bakari just sitting in the front seat. Mm -hmm. like you don't even necessarily notice the laptop on first watch, and then it's very yeah. visible. But last episode, this nigga put his hand around your neck, mm -hmm. threaten you, mm -hmm. talk to you about this book, so mm -hmm. you know that he's not liking it. You know he's yeah. not he's not a fan of this idea. Why would you come to his birthday party? Come on. With the laptop that you just got. Come on. Continuing to work on your book. Like, I just can't. I Like, I need somebody out there to explain one reasonable scenario as to how that makes sense or why you would do something like that. And I don't want to hear none of that. Bakari is only 18, 19. Bro, you smarter than that. Honey. <laughs> like, that just doesn't make sense. He should have a little bit more wisdom. And he doesn't. I don't understand that. That's part of what's bothering me about the show. It's not as realistic. Like, yes, you have to implement TV magic and TV, a TV thought process, I guess. Howsoever, there has to still be some element of real life, some element of common sense that makes the story believable for continuity's sake. Has to. It, it it just this, does not make sense. It's so minor that I understand it, and I'm sure that's mm -hmm. what the writers' room was thinking. Like, hey, this is just a small thing. We're just building up, and I think what's happening is they're building up whatever's coming. Like, mm -hmm. so they're building up the reasons. If it is Picard, that's going to take Dude out. They're making yeah. checklists. All right, they do the did this to Picard. Do the did that to Picard. Do the did this 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 this. Mm -hmm. That's cool. But you got enough ammunition already without that for that Bakari part. to have enough reason to want to take yeah. out Duda. Yeah. Like that's, he's already got it in him. He's self-motivated. We don't have to take this scene that's not even like a... And if you're going to do something like that, make it a, like a dope-ass scene. Like Make it one of those scenes that we talk about first Yeah, you know, when we get into the episode. It was a throwaway scene. Like, all right, cool. Like, dude is a bully. We know that. We know that. Like, but why mm -hmm. did you bring your laptop? Like, my nigga, that just does not make sense. But, and as a sentimental gift, we saw you get it. And it's partly mm -hmm. because we're all rooting for Bakari. For At sure. At this point, we want Bakari to win. Um, for sure. So it's just making us, as I said earlier, this is part of that thing where they're making Duda a, a, a comic book villain at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just going out of your way to be a dickhead. For sure. When you all right, we already know you ain't shit. So it, it's just an odd thing that they did. Um, and more so like Bakari, you deserve that shit. If you brought that shit to this nigga birthday party, like yeah, why would you bring this? Whatever, like why would you even do that? And it's not yours, like it's not your laptop. So that should even be more protected. Even if he gave it to you, if the professor yeah. even gave it to you, yeah, you should be even more protective because you know you was hustling and trying to like earn your way to get this. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even bringing it close. Even on accident, on some accident shit, these niggas about to be drinking and smoking. I don't even that want nobody to bump this over and knock it down. So even from that, that perspective, I don't know. That just had a real big issue with that because I think the show is better than that. And that's why it's frustrating. If it wasn't, yeah. this is the dirty D. 
if this is just some bullshit, like some Tubi shit, then that's cool. Like a lot yeah. of things you can bypass because you expect it. I'm just watching this yeah. like, you know, uh, pure entertainment. But a show mm-hmm. that was so good, and I don't want to like live in the past with it. The show that still has potential for a lot of great storylines. For them to not really like to drop the ball on some of these things, it's just a little bit frustrating. For sure. It's a little bit frustrating. Um, but speaking of Bakari, let's rewind on him a little bit. Mm-hmm. We have him with uh, Professor Jake. Gardner. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I'll say we'll talk. We'll talk about Jake here in a second. But we have him with Professor Gardner. He's getting critiqued about his writing style. Um, mm-hmm. To me, that is just showing that he is taking this serious, serious enough to get the help from Professor Gardner, and also mm-hmm. like any learning curve. Um, and there's going to be some frustrations. Like, bro, I don't know how to do this. Like, sometimes yeah. you want somebody to tell you. What do I do next? I don't know anything about this, but I know I don't want to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I thought that was a very like sentimental milestone moment when Professor Gardner mm-hmm. gave him that laptop. And that's an investment into him. Like, I believe in you. I believe in your talent. Like, tell your story, my nigga. Mm-hmm. Um, and go ahead. Even beyond that, for me, um, and I talked about it once we saw Bakari enter this English 101, whatever it is, class, that there was going to be some level of deficiency, um, not just not being able to write at the collegiate level, but there are so many things that you learn about writing, like not doing run-on sentences and all of that, Uh, punctuation, you know, mattering, Mm -hmm. comprehension, not writing how you speak, you know, you learn all of that in school. And we still don't really know how much education Bakari actually has. You know what I'm saying? So him being vulnerable also, or feeling like any level of critique was such a negative. And it just, it made me think of what he and Brittany for all intents and purposes have endured that we don't know about their stories. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it reminded me, you said it earlier, I don't want to hear that Bakari is only 18, but he is still very much like a little boy in an adult body, in an adult situation, but he's not grown. You know what I'm saying? 37 showing up as a (laughs) seven-year-old. Shout out to Kendrick, but... um... That's pretty much it. You are absolutely right when it comes to that. Um, yeah, I, that's a great point that you made, Rachel. And I guess, yeah, because we don't know any of that. Mm-hmm. And I think that needs to be taken into account because even him making a comment, like, keeping and it keeps our, his foot on our necks. Yeah. Like, there's certain things you just know, like, bro, this ain't the time nor the place to even get that mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is, I, I love the journey of him learning and wanting to learn. Yeah. It is an uphill battle. I'm curious to know what the reaction of Professor Gardner is going to be. Um, what story he tells. Mm-hmm. Because if he takes the blame himself and says, oh, I dropped it on clumsy. Because remember, he was already late to that first meeting. That exactly. Exactly. Professor Gardner was like, deals off the table. So every single time I'm giving you a chance, something's happening. And that's an issue. Mm-hmm. Like, how much of my time, how much do I want to invest in you? I see you're a bright kid, but this is also Chicago. This is the south side of Chicago. Like, I'm not going to get involved with somebody who's not off, like, not all the way in. Um, and maybe yeah. he has the patience and the grace to understand that Bakari's in a situation where he can't just leave um, and still pours into him. But I wouldn't be upset or surprised if Professor Gardner's like, yo, I'm cool. Like you ain't even a student here, my nigga. Depending on what else is in that book, journal, mm. free, free writing, maybe there's insight that Professor Gardner has that we don't know that he has yet. So even with having the knowledge that he told him, if I don't do this, I'm either going to die or be in jail. The brief history uh, of what we know that I don't want to say Bakari was reading audibly, but what he was narrating, you know, for us to hear 
it's some stuff in there. So I can just take your history and know that you're probably in some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, so maybe there is an element of grace um, and protection that he has. Or maybe Bakari tells him the truth. Maybe. I think he needs somebody to just be able to pour into and pour yeah. out to, should I say, and tell the truth. Um, as we stick on the topic of Bakari, another thing that it really just pours into your point, Rachel, or goes into your point, should I say, about his age and his mindset. Mm-hmm. Sitting with, at this party, he's with Jake. Yeah. And Duda knows him writing the book. Mm-hmm. Jake's response is, like, you write the book? Like, my nigga, this is news to me. Right. I wasn't even hit. It was the fact that Bakari couldn't put together where it came. The only people I knew was, you know, Lene and my teacher. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, Jake pushes a little bit more. Anybody else know? And then he says, oh, my sister. Jake says, like, listen, man, I ain't trying to even be that dude, but your sister, she always seems shaded to me. Like, I'm just telling you what I think. Like, do what you do with that. Um, Because we said last week, that's one of the, we were upset with Duda for even dropping that information because it's a clear line Mm -hmm. how this information got to him. Exactly. And even it took Bakari a little bit to even like put that together. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I'm very curious to see the next interaction between Bakari and Brittany and what comes of that. I think that he is either going to blow up on her or play it cool to see, let her hang herself. But it's probably going to be the former. Yeah, and you're going to buy me a new laptop, too. For sure. If I know you out here putting out money, you getting Gemma apartments and all that, that stuff, part. like, I need that bread for this laptop. That part. This shit got broken because you ran your mouth and all that stuff. And, but most importantly, Bakari's going to have to figure out why. And mm-hmm. hopefully he has enough presence of mind to get to that point. Yeah. I know you told Duda. What I don't know is why. Or maybe you told somebody who told Duda. He may not have it. He may not have it in him to put together that she is working directly with him. Maybe I would hope, somebody. I would hope so because I just talked to you when you came to visit me last week. I heard you came up with some money. Mm-hmm. And how you go from homeless, how you go from being homeless to handing out checks. Right. Now, dude the knows about my book. Maybe he puts two and two together. I'm hoping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Given everything that we've seen with Bakari, it probably won't happen. Yeah. But I'm hoping he puts those dots together um, and kind of gets an idea. But that's a tricky situation, too, because Bakari's instinct, like you said, is to blow up. Mm-hmm. You can't do that in this situation. Now you need to play chess. Now you need to kind of use this information to your advantage. Yeah. And at the right time, try to figure out, well, yeah, why does Duda, like, what's up with you and Duda? Like, why are you talking about me to Duda? Like, what's really right. going on? Right. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. It's just a little it, it, it's Bakari's just a different dude this season, it feels like. And I think that comes with growth. For sure, for sure. And I'm still rooting for him. I'm still very much rooting for him. Um we talked a little bit about Jake. We saw I don't want to see him and Gemma having sex. They are still very much like kids to me, even though they're grown and maybe in real life are partaking, but they just look young to me. And maybe yeah. knowing them and knowing that we're only a semester out of high school, I, I don't know. It's very awkward. But their little scene, it speaks to their youth. And naivete, I think Jake, he's obviously lived a little bit more, obviously, than Gemma. But that's why kids need to stay. No, I'm just playing. I'm about to go there. <laughs> <laughs> 18, 19, it was up, you know. But yeah. I'm, I'm just very, I'm curious as to what the rest of their relationship will even look like. I kind of thought that they were going to be on a break. Um so even seeing them together was kind of off to me. Yeah, and you know they're having a conversation about 
bringing up other people and shit. I can't mm-hmm. stop thinking about it. And Jake saying, you're the one that brought it up. Brought it up. To your right. point, Rachel, all I'm going to say about that is, yeah, listen, we've been 18, 19 before. For it's sure. been up before. Sure. Uh, but I will say, I don't even want to look at my 18 and 19 year old adventures and revisit that. Like I don't have any interest in any 18 or 19 year olds sexual activity. Not at all. All of that. Like I don't, I don't, I personally just don't care, especially yeah. ones that we've seen grow up on camera. Right. Um, it, it is a little bit odd. Um, and I don't, I don't care. I don't, when you're that young and you still have so much to figure out in life, none of that matters. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. Cause it don't matter. For sure. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Um, so Jake also go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jake also got a bag to bail trick out. Yes. What do you think about this move from Duda to send this money? Duda is protecting his asset. Mm-hmm. That's it. I'm not surprised. I'm gonna get you out of jail. Just like the same way he said to Damien, if he gets arrested, mm-hmm. I'll bail him out, you know, in regards to Emmett. I didn't think anything of it because there is always the possibility of trig snitching. So let me get you up out of there. Let me figure out how I can protect myself by protecting you. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, And like Jake said, man, Jake is young enough to where I'm going to take this money to get my brother out of jail. Like, I don't give a fuck where it came from, who it came from. Like He told he told matter. Trig in the car, like, nigga, aren't you out? That's all that like, That was the main goal. That's all that matters. That matter. was the main goal when it comes to this. All right, Rachel, we have to let's let's talk about Rosalind real quick. Yeah. Let's just talk about Rosalind and what she is up to, what mm-hmm. she's doing. First, let me ask you this. Do you have any interest in Rosalind's character at this point in regards to this episode? Not as a whole, but just in regards to this episode. So when we first saw her on screen, I was like, oh. Okay, I called it. I knew that we would see Rosin again before the season was out. I'm curious as to what made her... I'm not. I figured it out. I was curious as to what made her pop up, but I'm going to assume it was the shooting. And we know that she is a... branding specialist or a marketing Mm -hmm. maven, you know? So mm-hmm. I am Strat- I, a strategist. I was, I was, that's probably the best word for it, strategist. Yeah. So I was under the impression that we would see her come to try to bring business back into Smokies. Because if you are going to be filtering money through a business, it can't be fledgling. Like it can't be struggling. No one's coming in. It's not going to make sense. You know? Did it? So, let me ask you this real quick. Emmett's making a deal with Alicia. Mm-hmm. We'll do this as well. I'm not mm-hmm. doing this. Shooting Smokies. Yeah. Did it surprise you at all that Rosalind was in there and there was no real pushback from Emmett given that... Or I guess this is I guess this is supposed to be after Dude is out of here. Right? I think I might have just answered my question. Maybe, maybe their business doesn't start... When I say their, I mean Emmett and Alicia when it comes to Smokies. Maybe that doesn't start until Duda is no longer a factor. So maybe I have to just answer my own question. I don't know. I don't think so. I think Emmett is a fool. So I think that he's just in there. You know what I'm saying? I think maybe he yeah. expects her to be there because even his attitude towards her, like it was frustration. I know who you are, but there's also so many other things that I have going on. I can't even really give you the attention that you're looking for and that you need. Um, You asked me, am I super interested? Not really. I don't care about you and this deaf stud working in the kitchen. Don't care anything about it, Rachel. I don't know if that's a E-E-O-O situation, but I think that that would be like harmful. You can't hear you're in the kitchen. It it doesn't make any sense. I I don't know. (laughs) She only does prep. I don't know. Audience, let us know the real rules beyond that, if that is something that potentially makes sense or could be harmful. We're not being ableist. I just did. It didn't make a lick of sense to me. Yeah, even her picking her up at the end. Um, well, we which, know Rosalind likes to play. 
Yeah, we know Rosalyn likes to play. Shout out to the secretary. Um, <laughs> my thing, my thing was, we saw earlier in the episode that you don't know how to sign, um, and that she's having trouble reading your lips. Yeah, well, they make the and lips get, she can't read. So exactly, and I, I, I want to say I get what she's getting to, and I get the whole purpose of her picking her up is to, yeah. like, it's not to really get directions how to take you home, mm-hmm. but there is going to be some communication that needs to be had. And that's going to be pretty difficult while you're driving to have said communication. I, maybe I'm thinking about the wrong things and taking this way too deep, but it just didn't make. Once again, it didn't make sense to me. I don't, and I don't care. I don't care. Like, I'm tired of all the extra love interests. Everybody got a love interest. Everybody got a love interest. I went on a date one time with a, a somebody who was hearing impaired. How did that go? I got. I got. No way. I don't. Don't even answer that. I got, you know what? I don't care. You know him too. <laughs> I hope it ain't who I'm thinking of. It was a bit. It was Do I know what I got a million questions? We're gonna get through this episode, man. I'm not I'm not taking it there with you today, man. I'm not doing this. Rachel's hilarious. Um we talked about it. That goes straight from I was about to say Lala and Vic. Hey, I'm not Ooh. fucking with you. Um, <laughs> once again, Jamal and I forget Lala's name. Dom. Lala's on every dime. Lala's on every mm-hmm. black show. Yeah. Um but yeah, I, I, and then even um um to wrap up the episode and, and at the end, Laporte, Laporte, like I, I don't care. Yeah, we don't need don't it. Care. You wrote like, Drake. Doing way too much. Get her off. It is what it is. Does yeah, Lene like, even still live in that house? Keisha, you were at your mama house, but you wasn't. There was no scene between y'all. It didn't make sense. It was unnecessary. Yeah, I'm just tired of all the unnecessary love interests. I don't care about any of that. Like, hopefully, yeah. hopefully they start to make sense. Like I said, we got three more episodes, so maybe they start to make sense. But right now, with as much as going on, this episode just felt all over the place. It did. It, it felt did. like the writers don't know how to end the season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're starting to get pieces of that. Um, all right, there's a couple more things that we can go ahead and discuss. Um, I don't know if you want to jump on the next topic, but uh, I yes, will. We're talking about uh, Smokies. I just wanted to say shout out to Emmett for actually hiring Damien. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Damien. Yeah. <laughs> Damien is tricky. And, and maybe not as innocent as I thought he was. I have not decided if I think that Damien was really trying to quote unquote intimidate Duda or get in with Duda because he doesn't want to be broke. I understand not wanting your brother to go to jail and understanding the IRS, but can you, are you totally sure you know who this man is, who you low key pressing? There's no way he knows who who, uh, Duda is. Mm Mm-hmm. If Damien, if we had enough of a backstory to where I knew Damien had been in trouble, mm-hmm. I would say Damien is working as an informant. Mm. Like that's what his actions indicated. I don't. I'm not saying that on the record that I believe it because I don't know enough about Damien. Yeah, but everything he did was informant behavior. Yeah, it just didn't make any sense. It does go to what you just said, Rachel. There is more to Damien than meets that than what meets the eye. Mm-hmm. Like he's not just this clumsy kid playing laser tag who wants to spend time with his brother. Yeah, like he, there there is something because you don't take a step like that for someone you don't know, for real, for real. Mm-hmm. This is a big play, for sure. Um, you saying it without saying it, like my nigga, I know what you're doing with these books. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't you say something about is this Harlem location even a thing? Yes. Yeah. And Damien's asking the same questions. Like, have you ever yeah. even been there? Like, like what's going on? So we know it's money laundering. We know obviously these, yeah. these books are cooked. 
but for Damien to take it upon himself to like let me talk to dude. Right. It did kind of anytime somebody volunteers to talk to the boss, I agree with what you're saying, Rachel. Yeah. Yeah. Like nigga, like shout out to Tariq. Show me the mother, teach me the motherfucking game, ghost. <laughs> the game go. Like, I don't know if he's trying to get a bigger piece, like, or or just pretty much tell him, like, I'm smart with this. Mm-hmm. And why don't you break me off and I'll make sure your books are straight? Yeah. I just need a little bit more information so I know how to cover the tracks. Mm-hmm. I think that's the ultimate play. Like, I can really help you, my nigga. Like, throw yeah. me that bag and I got you. And I just need a little bit more information. Yeah. So that way, if the feds do come, I don't think he gives a fuck about him going to the jail. Mm. Like, I don't, you know, I don't think he gives a fuck about it. Like, yeah. I'm not saying that he's not brotherly, but I don't think that's his main concern. For sure. For sure. Like, it, just, it just doesn't make sense. Like, if I'm just meeting someone, it's my, like, it just doesn't make sense. It has to be something to this effect because it's just too random for him to pop up. His pop up is like Britney's pop up. You know what I'm saying? It's something to it. Matter of fact, even beyond that, Rachel, it's not even realistic for Duda to take this meeting. Who the fuck not, are you? Not at all. Who are you? Like, I don't even fuck with your brother. Mm-hmm. To be taking meetings with his brother. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't make sense. So um sure. it seems like Damien, like you said, there is more to Damien than what we know. Mm-hmm. I don't know the full story, but there's definitely something there. Yeah. Um, shout out to him for you know wanting to help. Side eye, wink, wink, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> I, I can see that he's talented, mm-hmm. and obviously there's something going on to where Emmett trusted him with the books. Emmett when don't know went, what's in them books. You think Emmett said how do they yes. like Emmett? Emmett knows that there's money laundering going on, right? Please don't, don't tell me you don't. I don't think so. Emmett's or not problem. to the extent that it's going on. Or what, what? I remember due to explaining, but I don't think that Emmett understands that it's money laundering. He does South not Side understand Chicago, like cleaning cash. Maybe it's my fault for assuming that these Southside Chicago niggas got street smarts for days. I figure anybody, anytime, that's how money gets washed. Like, in the hood. Like, there's an investment, there's a silent partner, there's always that you don't have any, like, yeah, anytime somebody takes care of the accounting for you and you ain't seeing the books, there's something funny going on with that money. For sure. But Emmett, he from the South Side, but not necessarily the hood. I Darnell would have told him. I figured Darnell would have told him, like, he just we met Darnell. That's fair. Darnell might have said something, but Emmett wasn't trying to hear no advice or know anything from Darnell or even Jada when he first got hooked up with Duda. No, could nobody tell Emmett shit. That's fair. That's the problem. He's a ladies' man, <laughs> he's a <laughs> he sweetheart. Sweet. He's a sweet nigga. He does not know about any of that. So do I believe this is, that he's in the dark? Yeah. So this is how niggas really get in over their head. For sure. They they clueless. They really clueless. I, I just I guess it's the same way when Trey told told Jake earlier, like you just said somebody money, you ain't asked no questions. Yeah. Like, yeah, my nigga. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. That's how we've seen Emmett move. He ain't really asked no questions. Nothing that required an answer. That he would even have the bandwidth to understand the answer. Why is Damien explaining taxes to Duda, who ran uh, Perry's Pizza, who understands how to clean money in business? Because he's letting him know, like, I know what you got going on. like, Which isn't even a good play. Perry not making sure that the books are right. Obviously, people have multiple sets of books. That's one thing. Howsoever, you've cleaned your money in a restaurant before. You know what I think? Um, you know what I'm starting to think? I'm starting to think that 
there is still some Otis Perry in there. Like they're giving us so much Duda. Yeah. This season. Mm -hmm. That we haven't, we're losing sight of Otis Perry. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, like why would why would Duda even take this meeting? And Duda didn't yeah. take the meeting. Otis took the meeting. Yeah. Because if this is an employee who's working on the books at one of my establishments, mm -hmm. then I'm going to treat it as such. I will take that meeting because I want to know what you know. Yeah. And it makes sense for him to tell him, like, oh, why don't you just let me worry about that? You get the books cleaned up and I'll take care of everything else. Mm -hmm. um, that's the businessman conversation. That's not a nigga, you say something about these books, I'll kill you. That's a yeah. dude, that's the do the move. Yeah. So I think I just answered that in real time. It kind of makes a little bit more sense if I'm looking at it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you just mentioned, like, Otis Perry knows how to do this stuff. Like, dude yeah. is just so out, out of here this season mm -hmm. that it's hard to forget that there are two angles to this whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah, especially when you don't know Damien. Because you're not going to, like, press on Damien when you don't even know. You could be a citizen. I don't know what's going on with you. Yeah, for um, sure. What did you think? Because we have to, we still have to talk about the pastor. Mm -hmm. um, we still have to talk about Shad and Alicia. Mm -hmm. um, that great scene. Um, and then we can talk about Duda. I know we talked about Duda throughout the episode. Um, I guess briefly, because there wasn't really much content or anything that followed up. Um, Bianca. I was going to ask you what you thought about Bianca. She's still trying to get her man back. Yeah. Um, what I was going to ask you was, what's your response if you make a gesture on 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 on, your, on a nigga birthday and he tell you like I want to be alone? Is it dead for me? Yeah. Like you're not. It's not like you just did something nice, but I'm showing up looking nice. I'm I, I got the whole thing going for you. But so I'm here's the here. thing. My ego, obviously. I know that you're not fucking with me, and rightfully so, because, again, motherfuckers talk too much, Tiff. Mm -hmm. I have to do what I have to do to get back in your good graces. One, because Bianca clearly still likes to fuck this nigga, so there's that. But two, we know that there is still a job or a task from Alicia, a favor that is, needs to be cashed in, that requires her having proximity to Duda. So she still, yeah. aside from getting what she needs to do for her, she has to do what she has to do to make sure that that's on the up and up too. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a that's a great point. And, and part of me when I watch this, and once again, I'm not trying to dump on the writer's room. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's going to be revealed in the next few episodes. But part of me was thinking, I would, if I'm Duda, I genuinely don't know who I can trust. Yeah. And yeah, we got our thing going on, but after that funny little shit with Tiff, I know that you talk. Yep. And I, I can't afford to have anyone around me who's talking. Yep. Like you, you know where I lay my head. Which yep. if you live this life, that's the most dangerous thing that you can give someone access to. Yep. You know, there usually there's some unwritten rules, but in in, in this world. Like Duda's lost the the privilege of these unwritten rules. Like nigga, well, sure. we going nigga. I don't care if you're walking out of Sunday service, nigga. Yeah. Pop you. Like it, it's yeah. it's up with Duda. Like he's he's crossed that many people. Mm -hmm. So I can definitely understand him saying like, you know what? I don't even want to. But I can also say you might be in too deep. Mm -hmm. If I if I do disconnect, then that might give you reason to go ahead and tell who you need to tell about. My whereabouts, my routine, my schedule. It's rough times for Duda. Like he, he, he's I understand him being stressed. You gotta be stressed for to sure. turn down Bianca um in that in that uh in that outfit with the candles. Cause yeah, I'm getting that nut first. <laughs> I'll stress later. I'll stress later. Nah, you looking hey, it's my birthday. Yeah, we about to yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 getting that nut first. I don't, You're I don't nut. Care. I don't care. You're um nut. But yeah, no, I feel you. So yeah, maybe I get I, I can understand. I can give him a little grace mm -hmm. on that end. Um Trig and um Fatima. Yeah, separating. Don't really I'm not gonna say I don't care, but there's nothing to talk about. 
it's nothing to talk about. We didn't need you going to the the girl house. <laughs> yeah, like, every, time I, every time I see it, I think about that video, man. Oh. Just having to like, I'm your girl. <laughs> you my girl. Don't you yeah. know that we love you? Shout yeah, out to uh, that. One, one of them hugs. But, yeah, shout uh, out to Destiny's child, man. Yeah, I just you taking a break. I and she said she ain't going to jail for that nigga too. <laughs> she getting the fuck out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Now I know what I wanted to talk about. Before we, got, before we got into Alicia, before we uh got into the pastor. Mm -hmm. Um also shout out to Maisha, even though we get it for two seconds. Yeah. Shout out to her taking pictures. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to get into um Marcus. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um this mm -hmm. was one of the more fascinating stories things throughout the yeah, throughout the episode. Um and it's it's all standalone thing. But you know, if you followed us for a while and listened to myself and Rachel, um, you know how much we like analyzing the dynamics of relationships. For sure. And oh, oh, all right, my nigga. All right, I'm thinking about this. If I'm if I'm in the men's circle, uh -huh. that's what I'm trying to think about this. Like, my nigga, what did you think was going to happen? Like, what did you really think you was taking these pictures for? You thought you were taking these pictures. To hang around the creative and nobody was ever gonna see it. Like, it doesn't what you really sense. thought. Like, is that what you seriously thought? Because if that's what you thought, then I know how to start this conversation. Because there's he no way in hell you, you bro, you way too old to think <laughs> that you have professional photos, family photos. Like nobody, I'm not gonna say nobody, mm -hmm. but there's a different level of um, I think it's unfair to say vanity. Yeah. But I'm going to use that in this situation. It's a different level of vanity to have professional photos done and nobody sees them with you. For sure. For like, sure. That's just odd. And when your girl is the one that's asking for them, first of all, you're way too old to not understand that women like to be claimed for and sure. shown off. I'm for not sure. saying, I'm not going to get into the whole weird social media Mm -hmm. You got to post it, whatever. Whatever works for your relationship works for your relationship. But yeah. there are other ways to show people that this is my girl. Like, I'm not hiding my person. Like, you don't have yeah. to know everything about it, but I want you to know that I do have someone. For this sure. is who it is. Anything else past that is just, you know, whatever you decide to share. Yeah. But you got to understand and recognize that. And I understand he's cool. He said something that, um, I think it was along the line of love not being more important than freedom. Mm -hmm. I can't like you too old for that, my nigga. Like, and I don't want to. I don't want to put an age on things, but when you've had a real solid person, yeah, man, woman, however you look at things, if you had a solid ass woman by your side, that is more than freedom. Like, for sure, for sure. And and to your point. These aren't, we just set up our camera. Like, we got dressed in matching outfits. We included it. It's not no shit that just we did. So I, I don't understand what he thought. Um, it, it was weird. And then there's also this age gap. And I know that Darnell is in the circle too. But maybe they need a separate circle. Mm. And then, like a joint circle, you know, the what unhealed, I'm the, the, the unhealed old nigga circle, yeah. Because maybe y'all need to talk separately. I'm, I just worry about like all these age demographics, everybody is too blended. I don't be around young people, <laughs> not at all. I not do have all. older people who I talk to and glean from, but. I don't know. It, it it makes sense if Darnell and Marcus are facilitating. Mm -hmm. like if we're with Shy, we're kind of facilitating and we're helping y'all out with some of y'all issues that y'all got going on. So Rob, mm -hmm. Emmett, um, whoever else wants to come to the table. Yeah. Um, but I don't what am I going to tell Emmett like about the one and even though he had some good points, like women were like, I get it. But there's nothing I can really talk to you about. You don't understand. You ain't been here. You don't know none of that. That's 
That part. Like, um, that part. But yeah, the whole idea of playing house, I want this to feel real. I just couldn't get over the fact that he thought that this was something that was going to just stay in the cut. Like, what are you doing that you can't just have? Like, it's especially when you get to a certain age. Yeah. Like, nigga, I expect you to cycle through. Like, all right, mm -hmm. cool. Like, I'm not, nobody's tripping. Like, all right, what? What happened to old girl? She ain't around no more. Okay, cool. Like nobody's gonna care. Like, oh, what the girl that you took the Christmas photos with? She ain't around no more. Like, whatever, man. Release yeah. some pictures and call it a day. And and mind you, Marcus still doesn't know about Tierra and uh and Shot. Mm, you're right. Which is gonna that's gotta come out, right? It's gotta come out. It's gotta come out. So that was my thought during the sister during the brother circle in the first place it's like damn i i'm talking about my my girl with this nigga that loves her and was coveting her all of this time knowing that we together tricky that's gonna cause a rift it's gotta come out mm, damn i ain't thinking about that i forgot about that you are absolutely right it's gotta come out mm. it's gonna be <laughs> well, yeah, it always comes to always comes to the light. What they say, sure. one thing about them tables, they always turn. For speaking sure. of shy, yeah. Speaking of shy, one of the most entertaining scenes of the episode and of the season so far. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Alicia and all the women like Alicia. Unless you maneuvered with a woman like Alicia, you will Alicia. Excuse me, you will not understand this scene. Um, it's not funny in the moment, but. You gotta have a funny woman there now and then to, to get to build some character. Um, and I mean this wholeheartedly. I know it sounds funny. Uh -huh. At 37 years old, I can look back at some things in life and kind of just chuckle about them. Mm -hmm. It teaches you how to move in certain ways. But if you ain't never had a woman play in your face a little bit, <laughs> you ain't you you're not all the way seasoned. I'm just saying yeah, there, there, sure. there, there, there's a there's a you learn a lot about yourself. Mm -hmm. When a woman like, and it's got to be a uh, Alicia can do this. Yes. Right. Ray P can do this. <laughs> like, Justin. there's certain women that can do this. <laughs> you crazy? Oh, um, but there's certain women who can do this and get away with it. Yeah. Um. And what I'm speaking of is obviously Alonzo comes to Alicia's house for sure. And you have. I just love the whole scene, the whole set. You have Shad and Alicia, and they're having a drink, having a good old time. I don't know why, and I'm sure people are going to start. I'm sure there's internet threads about it right now. Yeah. Hey, Shad, my nigga, we know she gave you that jacket. We get it. You ain't got to wear that jacket every motherfucking wear that you go. You don't. You really don't. You're to look in the park. <laughs> yeah, but you can have a black suit. And I just love him opening the door. He knows who's he knows who Alonzo is. Yeah. He shakes his hand. Alonzo just looking like gives him the up and down. Like, is that my jacket? You get this nigga my jacket. And what makes it even more funny is a lot. It's not like it's not like a nigga did a year bid and yeah. came home and you know another nigga wearing your shirts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Alonzo did the double take because he was like, "Damn, is that my jacket? Because I haven't worn that in about 20 years. Right. Maybe longer. Right. Like, why do you even have it? And for, to, for Alicia to know it, because here's what happens. A lot of women and men in this situation, they start getting a little bit, uh, oh, man, you weren't supposed to notice that. You weren't supposed to, like, Alicia didn't give a fuck. I'm going to continue Dang, this conversation. Good. You're not here to wear it anymore. Like Period. specifically telling you, um, if you are shy, this is what this is, bro. Like you, mm -hmm. you, a, you a little nigga to me. Yeah. Like even her telling him, like nigga, I'm not trying to be your husband. You can never be him. Yo, there are certain things. Like I said, you have to have your character tested some by some of these yeah. women out here. That's wild to say. And openly flirting with this nigga, like if if this nigga, if Alonzo was on it, she would have kicked shot out. Kicked Matter shot of fact, she, she might have told. She would have had that nigga. She would have had that guard. nigga outside the door, stand guard, while I scream from the top of my lungs, and this nigga digging my shit out. Crazy. And that's the type of woman Alicia is. Crazy. 
mm-hmm. playing with this man. And you know, just to joke, I don't like being in the I don't like being the butt of anybody's joke. Like, sure. don't 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 have this nigga walking out looking at me talking about some nice jacket, bro. Like, come For on, sure. man. Stop playing with me. For sure. Like, I look crazy. And Darnell told that nigga, like, bro, yep. this definitely one of our old niggas. <laughs> He ain't want to listen. Even if he did, like, why you couldn't say, okay, look, is there another uniform? Hey, Buy me a jacket. When Alonzo left, Alonzo gave Alicia that kiss. Bruh. That nigga, that nigga shy, gave her that look, and she was like, I think it is what it is. I don't want you to tell me. I don't appreciate you trying to turn me into your ex. You could never be him. What? Yeah, crazy shy was about to pop out. Crazy, crazy shy was, was definitely about to pop out, but uh, maybe he didn't know. Alicia liked that crazy shit. Yeah, clearly, harder, and he pulled yeah. out. Yeah, harder, my nigga. Yeah, man, hands around the neck. You know what I'm saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Shout out to all the Alonzos. <laughs> <laughs> And the shot. <laughs> Everybody has a role to play. <laughs> oh man! Shout out to that. I'm, I'm not speaking anymore. I could listen. I could go on a whole another episode. To discuss yeah, that, but I'm not. Yeah, I say a lot yeah. of things right now that I'm not going to say. Um, Let's but yeah, I just thought that was funny. It was silly. It was definitely. Um, I guess there's only one place to wrap up, and that's with. Uh, Papa Zeke, Papa Pastor Zeke, Duda, and then of course a little bit of Duda in there. As well. <laughs> so we've been discussing the whole Papa Pastor mm-hmm. Zeke relationship. Mm-hmm. We've seen from the vantage point of characters within the series, whether it be Kenya, whether it be Zay, um, whether it be Papa's mom. Yeah, like people aren't fucking with Zeke. For sure. Um, Papa right seems to be the only one who's not picking up on it. Um, once again, when your daughter, when a nigga's daughter is telling you to be careful, mm-hmm. and speaking about the man who raised her, yeah, then that's what you need to take into account. Like those are the things you need to pay attention to. Um, Papa has his podcast. Shout out to all the creators out there. Um, and of course, in true Pastor Zeke fashion, like, are you getting paid for this? Yeah. Which I'm not upset about it. Um, but we know enough about Pastor Zeke to know that he doesn't have any kind of integrity, real concern. It's integrity, nor does he really care about the message that's being put out. It's more so, yeah. are you being paid for this? And I wonder if I can get a cut of this. And that's all that it's about. It's really all it's about. Like what you make can actually go into the church and the congregation. Um, we get to know a little bit more about Pastor Zeke when he's talking to Pos- uh, Papa. Mm-hmm. Um, we know Pastor Zeke used to be a hustler, used to be in the streets. Should not be a surprise to anyone. Um, they 100% had to they had to base this character around the, uh, the pastor in New York. Um, uh-huh. I, which I can't remember his name. Moorhead. Bishop, or Bishop White. Bishop White. Um, I got to look this up now. Um, If you know, if anybody out there listening, um, you should know exactly who we're talking about. Yeah. The fancy pastor. Like, I knew what it was when he said he's the Jay-Z of pastors. Crazy. Crazy, Um, crazy. Which I I purposely did not um, address. Yeah, no. He ain't giving that too much shine. But I'm very curious as to what's going to happen. Uh, Papa don't have Lamar Whitehead. I'm sorry, Lam- I had to find his name. Lamar Whitehead. Bishop, Whitehead. Bishop Whitehead. I said Whitehead. Whitehead. Okay. I'm very curious as to what Papa is gonna when he's gonna wake up to what's going on. I hate. I know everybody has to go their own way and figure out their own path, but I hate that. He's he's about to be in the lion's den. I think I said it last week. Pastor Zeke is leading him down a dark path under the guise of being under the banner of the Lord. It's driving me crazy. As as a y'all know, I'm a little washed believer. Um, it's the story is pissing me off, 
in part because there's so much truth mm -hmm. in that. You know, this mm -hmm. isn't uh, an episode or even a show for that. But when we think about people preying on, like, allegedly Pastor Whitehead, Bishop Whitehead, um, and Pastor Zeke, preying on those in their communities who don't have it to give, but still are expecting it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and people will give because they'll play on that emotion. They'll play on the prosperity gospel, you know, bring all your ties to the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. You know, that scripture, money solves all things, you know, <laughs> oh, that scripture. Yes. So, oh, it's so tricky, but I feel so bad for Papa because he just doesn't know what he's, walking himself into and what on the surface is good advice you know we don't have no patreon yet but right. <laughs> yeah exactly. obviously the goal is monetization at some point you know i mean it, it, we do this for the love of it but also why not yeah. get some bread if you can exactly uh, on the surface it's good advice on the surface is well intentioned, but Pastor Zeke even just looks like a rat ass nigga. He looks sneaky. He looks like he's mischievous, always up to something. You know, he looks you in the eye, but it's it's something to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. ugh, I just don't like this nigga. He's I wrote out he's a demon. I know I said it when we met him. Like. <laughs> Yeah. It is, it is, and they do a great job. I will say the show does a great job of writing mm -hmm. this character and making yeah. us feel those emotions toward them. Um, and also having Papa in the dark because that adds mm -hmm. on to it. Because you all we're 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 yelling through our screens, Papa, don't do it. Like, don't please. Mm -hmm. Like, um, mm -hmm. and we're seeing some of the messages that he's giving them, even like the hundred dollar bill story. You know, yeah. this is how I came. Like, I know I didn't go to I didn't go to um school to be a pastor. I didn't do any of that. That shit wasn't even moving. His reviews wasn't even if you talk if you ever listen to a pastor that's been in them motherfucking streets in them trenches when you hear whatever there I know there's a God. I know God has his hand on my life stories and then you hear this nigga nigga mm -hmm. please I mean I guess it don't take, it don't have to take, oops, sorry. It don't have to take all of that. Well, that's why, and, and you know, it makes complete sense, right? That's why you have to do shit like that to somebody like Papa. Yeah. Because somebody like, and it, I don't even know if it's an age thing. I don't know how old Zay is. Yeah. But Zay ain't going for that. Like, bro, you know what I mean? I'm in these streets, bro. No, no, no. I don't believe you. Like you, your, sure. your father's a charming net man, not not charming enough for me to write him a check. Right. But I get it. We know that he was in the streets, but I wonder because Otis, was you in the streets of Chicago? Because he right. clearly don't know Duda enough. For everybody Can't, else, consider the age demographic. For everybody else, I'm assuming he might be Darnell in them age, maybe. Um they all know exactly who and what that nigga is and know he's not to be played with. But Pastor Zeke, you don't know that. I think you... So going back to the conversation we had about Alonzo, mm -hmm. I think that you just feel because of your title that you're protected from certain things. Yeah, do the crazy. Do the yeah. out here, whatever. Dude is not about to touch the, the pastor of the church. He killed so Pastor Jackson. Exactly. So my thing, my thing would be, why not? Because y'all, like, you, you're one of the biggest crooks. That part. Like you're not, you, 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 your, your hands are dirty in this whole situation. Yeah. I am glad that we got that scene to kind of finally connect it all. Mm -hmm. um, if there was any doubt about Pastor Zeke being a slime ball, like we, we confirmed it right here. Mm -hmm. um, He's having a cigar. He's taking money from Duda. Yeah. He wants more off the top. Um, and this conversation does not go the way that he thinks it should go. 
or that he right. would go. I don't know who he thought he was or why he thought, to your point, Rachel, I don't know how. Once again, he thought he was bigger. Once again, uh, how, how do you think this was going to turn out, my nigga? Yeah. Like, that's what I, I there's, there's a million characters in this show that I just want to ask that question to. Like, how did you think this was going to How did out? you think this would go? Yeah. Yeah. How do you think this was going to go? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Like, he I really don't... believed that he needed him. You he ain't really even the first that. pastor to get this option. Remember, Pastor Jackson took that envelope too at one point. Mm hmm. And that's a good and, thing. And watch your motherfucking tone when you talk to me. Period. Don't start coming in here telling me what my options are. Period. You don't play like that. You know what I'm saying? I can see if you're a big dog and you can back up that shit you're talking about, but if you can't and you know that I'm about that, like now I got you hemmed up. That now you ask me to let you go. Now, now you I got a cigar butt to your neck. Yeah. Like you see how quick this shit changed in a matter of 30 seconds? Like you see how quick this shit changed? Like you're not in control, my nigga. So mm. watch your mouth when you come in here talking to me. Yeah. Because I'm going to take it there. Are you? I don't think you are. And, and we see that he ain't. Watch your tone. Hey, Rachel, Rachel, you would always used to say, um, I don't think you said it in a while, but there's a lot of recordings where we had and things will happen. And Rachel would like to point out, you got to stand on that. Now you got to stand on that. That part. You come in here talking that big boy shit. Now you got to stand on this. I don't believe you. That part. I know I'm going to take it there. Are you? I don't believe you're going to take it there. Let's find out. Let me hem you up real quick and see what, what you about. Nope. And it ain't like no fun when a rabbit got the That's gun. Like, never. It's never fun. Child. You know what I'm saying? Bless it's it. It's never fun. Now you got to explain to your congregation why you got this burn mark. What happened? Yep. 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 I'm curious you know, as to what that story is gonna be. Hey, at least I gave you at least I gave you a message for this Sunday service. <laughs> you know, gave you some material to discuss. Um but yeah, just like just like um this episode of the shy, it, it, I mean it was just scattered, it was all over the place. It was there's not really much that I, I, I don't have any predictions. Because it's kind of just all over the place, like I mentioned. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of different directions that can go. The main thing that I'm concerned about is we have three more episodes this season. Yes. For the second part of season six. I know I've asked you, I feel like every, at the end of every episode, we've had this discussion. Mm-hmm. One of these niggas has to go, right? Mm-hmm. Duda or Alicia has to go. We get we're gonna find out when we get to we're gonna be able to see Alicia mm-hmm. finding out and Rob finding out that Alonzo's mm-hmm. going. Yep. So the after the after effects of that, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna take too much thinking to understand what happened, mm-hmm. who's responsible. Yeah. Um I will say this. I don't know if it happens in the next episode, but I think Zay is out of here. Somebody's gonna find out Zay did that and they're gonna take Zay up. My first thought was Rob. I know we know. I know we know Rob's not a shooter. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Something about it just makes me think that he could be the one that avenges his dad's death. It just makes sense. Yeah, since they um, didn't get a chance to reconnect. But Rob got to get to that yeah. range. Rob got to get to the range for real. Yeah, yeah, he got to get to the range, like straight up. You know, mm-hmm. Amon mm-hmm. Shepard wasn't known to be. Amon Shepard was never known to be a shoot, shooter in basketball either. So. Oh, they really? just tied that into the character. Nah, he was he was he was a defensive specialist. He was an athlete. Dunk mm-hmm. on your head, um, but you know, you ain't got to worry about him hitting a ton of open shots. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, Smoke and Mirrors is the next episode. Mm-hmm. I have no idea how this is gonna play out. I have no idea what Duda has up his sleeve. I don't know how he's covering his tracks. Um, we talked about Nuck and Emmett and how that's all going to play out. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I have no I'm idea. Curious. Yeah, I'm curious. No more predictions other than what I've already said. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I I look forward to Friday. That's yeah, all I Friday- got. Looking forward to Friday. Um, I, it has to heat up, right? It has to. Yeah. Three episodes left. It has to heat up. So 
I'm hoping that we have a much um, smoother episode in regards to all the activity. Um, mm -hmm. It does bother me that you're introducing these little small love interests. I don't care about it. We don't have enough time to really get into them. Um, so don't even introduce them. Hopefully it gets to the main characters, the main things. Keep the main thing the main thing. That part. Three more episodes. Um, hopefully everyone out there is enjoying the content. Um, yeah. If you are a fan of We Got Y'all, we appreciate you. For sure. House of the Dragon comes back sure. on Sunday. Oh, God. We'll start having, like, I've been doing my rewatch. Cannot wait. Mm. Um, so we'll have episodes for you next week, starting with that, along with the shy, as we wrap things up. Um, and that's really about it. That's really about it for right now. So, Rachel, unless you have anything else. I don't. My mind just started racing with everything coming up. Okay. I don't. I yeah. love y'all. Thank you so much for listening. Um, God bless y'all on your journeys. Like, share, subscribe. Please remember that we do got y'all. Comment on the post. Send us an email. Um, maybe I'll submit that. I'll start broadcasting the emails. Like y'all can send us emails. Tell us what you think or suggestions, shows you want to cover, or just get our thoughts on whatever. I don't know. Just, yeah, we got that. We'll get it all. We'll get it all. But please believe um, full court press coming with House of the Dragon um, for sure. Yeah, just just subscribe. Just make sure you subscribe yeah. and those notifications are on. Because the episodes are coming out hot and heavy. For sure. Um, we told y'all we was on a break. To it. Yeah. And now we back. We back. We back. And it's going to it's gonna keep rolling. There's other shows that are going to be added to the mix. Uh, but Rachel, I love you. I appreciate I you. you. I love you um, so like much. You said, yeah, man. Same. And like you said, everybody out there listening, watching, we appreciate y'all. We will see y'all next week. Two episodes. The Shy and House of the Dragon. Two separate episodes. Um I'm sure at some point we'll we'll have many conversations about Ghost mm -hmm. season four. They're in their season or series finale season. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of other stuff. The Bears about to come back. Yeah. Um, all types of stuff. So y'all be tuned in. Hit subscribe. We will see y'all next week. Y'all be cool. Peace.